Hey everybody, it's the dugout Jim Davis along with the Buckeye Boy. The Jim Davis Show, weekday mornings. I gotta sit up straight. Bad posture, never good. Weekday our mornings. Show's back. 7 to 10. We got weekday our set back. We're like last man standing. Same channel, though. They're on the same channel. How, how, we, like, how we like that show, really? Okay, so we're like Family Guy. Irreverent got canceled and back on the same channel. Great, great. Anyway, we're on weekday morning, 7 to 10, on the team. Sports Network, all right, the Rockies. We wave the Rockies flag. That's a to hopefully flag. rally them. It's more like a, yeah, it's mostly white here right now. After well, it's uh, like the, what they did in L.A. Yeah, after the Rockies got swept in three games by the Dodgers. Can't blame it on Tyler Anderson. I know a lot of you Rockies fans want to blame him, but he pitched in the sixth inning. Pitched really well last night. Scott Oberg gave up the pinch hit. Three run home run to Yasiel Puig last night. As the Rockies, as we film this on a Thursday now, two and a half back of the Dodgers in the National League West. Man, um, Kyle Freeland pitched really well the night before. Certainly Tyler Anderson gave him a chance to win last night. Yeah. Lack of offense, one game, bad start, another game, or last night, a case where the bullpen let them down. It was a little bit of everything in the series, Buckeye. Yeah, it was. Starting pitching was fine in two of the three games. It was the John Gray game that didn't really have yep. great starting pitching. I mean, Tyler Anderson's... Starting, I'll take that all night. I'll take that from everybody in the rotation. Yeah. If they can go into the sixth inning and only allow a couple runs, that's that's not all that bad. And considering, I think one or two of his charged runs came from Scott Ober giving up weeks three run homer. So there is a little bit of that. I offered this morning on the show. You can go to the team website or wherever you get podcasts. Check out our podcast on iTunes. That you go with four man rotation from here on out. You know you have Kyle Freeland. He's set to go Sunday night. He would go again next Thursday. And then on regular rest, he'd be ready to go for a wild card game if you need it. I don't know, I don't know why you would go do a five man rotation, push Kyle Freeland back an extra day, then he's having to go on short rest in the wild card game. Probably have that in the regular season as opposed to the playoffs. Because you're seeing that kind of already set up as they move, they move John Gray out of the the Sunday yep. guard against the uh, Diamondbacks, and it'll be Kyle Freeland on Sunday. Yeah, right now four man rotation. You got to win baseball games because there's still a very very outside shot of winning the division, mm -hmm. though the Dodgers' schedule down the stretch is the much e easier of the two schedules. It's getting the wild card right now, thanks to the Braves beating uh, the Cardinals last night. Rockies stay a game and a half back in the chase for the second wild card. But they right now they have problems with John Gray. It's a good thing that they moved him out of that spot on, on Sunday. Also, Trevor Story to begin work down at uh, Salt River Fields uh, in Arizona uh, coming off that uh, – at elbow injury, which nothing structural, just some right. soreness. Hopefully he'll be back maybe sometime first part of next week, potentially maybe this weekend uh, for the Rockies. They could certainly use his offense. You also have the Broncos and the Ravens this Sunday. 96-1 K-Star, 14 out of the team in rifle. Pre-game at uh, 9 o'clock with a 11 o'clock kickoff from M&T Bank uh, Stadium in Baltimore. Broncos are a five-point underdog in this game. They have never played well at M&T. They're one and four there. Can the Broncos' offense find a way to play four quarters of football? I, that's I think that's a big question against a they a, have against a really good defense. C.J. Mosley's not going to play. Yeah. They probably won't play their linebacker. But they still got a lot of talent on that defense. It's still going to be a tough assignment for the Broncos on Sunday. Well, they don't. They have trouble getting out of the gate as it is at two p.m. Two twenty-five starts. Yeah, at and, home. Yeah, at home. You know when they're going to be starting. Uh, three hours earlier, it's going to be hard for them to get out of the gate if they can minimize mistake. If they don't play very efficient but minimize mistakes. I think they'll be in the game for the offense to kind of get things turned around and to wake up later in the game. But if they have an interception problem and, you know, are not crucial and not good on special teams, they could be in for a long day. Yeah, historically, the Broncos don't play in the, well in those 11 o'clock games on the East Coast. Once again, 96-1 K-Star, 14 of the team, and Rifle will have it with pregame at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. So some brunch with the Broncos coming up on Sunday. We'll have the Rockies at Arizona after our coverage of high school football on Friday night, the black and blue game between Grand Junction and Fruit of Monument. We'll have that game. Also, our uh, buddy Max Ryan, along with uh, Nate Andrews, will have on 14 out of the team. Really great I-70 matchup. Uh, Glenwood taking on Rifle pregame for that, 6.30 on Friday night. And plus, uh, on our coverage of Fruit and Grand Junction, we'll have updates on Palisade at Montrose. Two undefeated teams right now, both uh, ranked in the top five in 3A and 4A going at it on that one as well. We'll have updates on that during Fruit and Grand Junction, the battle for the Black and Blue Trophy. Until next time, and go Rockies! Let's keep the faith, okay? Let's keep the hope. We'll see you next time.